Hello, hello again, it's Kat from the Fire Tuna Club. It's time for another doll repaint. No one's surprised anymore, are they? Um, I want some special dolls for with dogs and special units. Okay, I can make you a special doll. You heard it, folks. One of the members of my Fire Tuna Club has spoken. Actually, she was more of the inspiration. I have been working on dolls now for quite a while. And uh, she sees me work on them plenty enough, and this Operetta doll was one of my cast-offs that really wasn't going to get anything done to her because I had no idea what to do on her. So I just started the doll without a direction in mind and see what came of it. Plan or not, you still have to prep a doll the same way as usual, so I cut off her hair, took her head off the body and removed the last of the hair from the inside, and then I acetoned the face off. Thus, we have a prepped doll. Hey, Mattel, if you ever want to bring anything good back from the dead... You may want to bring Operetta's face mold back, but take off all the, um, music stuff. Like, once I got her peeled off, this face was amazing, and I'm glad I decided to challenge myself. Still don't like the impressions in the face, but that's not what this doll is about. Forcing myself to embrace the face mold and the impressions in her face, I just got right down to it, and... Thank you, Mr. Fire Tuna Club, for that sound effect of shaking a shake. Flying blind was a little bit frustrating, and there was a lot of back and forth, which you'll see later, but altogether, I feel like when you get to the end, she will definitely be a lot more of a unique and interesting character than some of the dolls I've made before. You can see on this doll that I've really embraced the watercolor pencils to get nice sharp eyelash lines, but I still very much rely on acrylics to get nice rich colors. You'll see here the color palette gets a little crazy. I really wanted to embrace the fact that in her backstory she is a conglomerate of souls, both good, neutral, um, and that, you know, essentially over time she's becoming super powered, so color. This to date has been my most layered up doll. I sprayed a good like three or four layers of testers to get that nice rich color that's starting to develop on her face. So let's just go ahead and start a hurry up and wait counter. I carry on the crazy coloring into the lips because I really want her to be a look at her and you know she's not normal kind of doll. <laughs> and then I seal it again. Hey, where's that counter? At this point, I'm nearly done with the face up. I'm getting the pastels on. I'm going to acrylic the eyes and then I'm going to seal it two more times. Yep. Two more, you heard me. And then the face up is finished. Doesn't her music impressions carry down in her body, you might ask? Why yes, they do, but I was hellbent on finishing the head first, so let's put the body aside and come back to it. In line with attempting to make her look more unnatural, I decided to use some slightly shimmery acrylic paint to go over all her magic marks and her unnatural coloring spots. <clears throat> While we're waiting for the sealant to dry on the face up, we should finish body blushing the body and the musical impressions there, and then let another layer of sealant dry. My, there seems to be a pattern here. 
I kind of steer clear from false eyelashes these days just because they're so painstaking to put on. I wonder if you can see me going slowly mad as I try to make sure these eyelashes stay in place as the glue dries ever so slowly. Oh yeah. All right, with the body disposed of in a ditch somewhere, I mean, drying in a corner. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the accessories. So I found from my stash of stuff, some shoes that were perfect for the idea as it was forming. Let the cruel and vicious cycle begin once again. Bringing down my running color scheme into the shoes, I first started with a layer of color and let that layer dry first. You remember my Willow Don't Starve doll and how I like to reuse and recycle? There was plenty of foam left over from that project so I decided to bring back some of that foam, prime it with some glue so that paint didn't soak in and begin to shape in Hitten's armor. While I waited for my glue primer to dry so I could paint my foam, I returned to the head, used my Liquitex high gloss varnish to give the eyes a little bit of extra shine and lips as if they didn't already have enough. Let try and begin the chaos of trying to find the right outfit to go with the right shoes. <laughs> Hey, look, something finished drying. Time to add some white sparkles to those colorful gems, and you guessed it, let them dry. You know, now might be an actual good time, since this dress is looking pretty good, to mention that I've started a Patreon. Yeah, I'm kind of joining the bandwagon here, but a girl's gotta buy her art supplies somehow. And if you've watched my Nike videos, you know that I talk about debt, so I try to follow my budget pretty good, but I gotta find some place to be able to afford all the poxy and the glues and the mold making supplies. So, if you wanna go ahead and check out my Patreon, I will be offering patterns, sneak peeks, and eventually, if I I meet some milestones, 3D printing, stickers, um, and more Patreon voted stuff instead of kind of whatever floats my boat to make. Let's add one to that count tracker for the fact that I had to wait for that silver paint to dry. Glue and silver paint aside, I made some buckles out of a little bit of wire and some straps out of some bias tape. And I am super gluing the buckles in place to be able to fit it onto my doll. Now, I'm going to give you guys a novel concept here, because I made this mistake several times during this project. Finish your painting before attaching them to the final product, um, or you'll be like me scrubbing off brown paint from silver metal. Oops. Hey, look, the shoe's dried again. Time to seal off the paint and wait for it to dry again. Hey, welcome to Team Didn't Think Things Through, when you decided you want to spray paint your foam by pinning it to a board so your spray paint wouldn't make it fly away. Oops! Problem easily solved by a little itty bitty gem. All you need is a little bit of glue and a little bit of drying time. Hey timer, plus one for oven baking polymer clay. Thank you timer. Just like Ganta, Inhetan is a very involved doll. This is the last bit of extra I'm going to show you. If you want to see more, join my Patreon, otherwise request in comments below when you might see a video in the future. I handmade the runes myself out of some polymer clay, pastels, and as you can see here, a little bit of gold and yellow paint to go a long way in making a complete rune set. Conflict is a constant of the universe. War tends to follow that constant. Every country and every people has been touched by it. <laughs> and one side always admits defeat at the end. And history remembers the winners. And of course there are those that died in the process. Which brings us to you. I regret to inform you you have been in a conflict and you are on the losing end. But you can continue the fight if you choose to join us. Or you can move on. You make the decision. I just wanted to take a quick moment before I go into the typical ending I like to do to say thank you guys. While I was editing this video and releasing it on Patreon, 
this channel got 100 followers, and I officially now have a custom URL. Uh, I don't have a lot of goals for this channel, but that was one of those things that I was hoping that I would get someday, so yay, and thank you for that, guys. That being said, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, press the little subscribe button, press the little bell button if you want to get notifications anytime something new happens, or if you don't want to do either of those and you just want to give a little shout out, go ahead and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and once more, thank you for 100 subscribers and a custom URL.